This could be a confusing video. I'll make it very clear. It's about two things. The existing XPG 6 that I own, new updates, a bunch of new updates, 25 new changes over the air, including an, an interesting karaoke feature, but some other stuff that you might actually use. And also some details about the new Xpeng G6. The new version has just gone on sale in Thailand, which is a right-hand drive market. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. So what are the new changes to the new Xpeng G6? Well, it does have a smaller battery. I, I don't know, I think maybe I'm happy that I've got the existing version because I prefer to have the bigger battery uh, and more range. The new version will have a bit less range. So I'm, you know, I'm cool with having the existing one, at least I'm telling myself that anyway. Anyhow, the new version gets super fast charging, 500 kilowatt fast charging, when it does come to Australia, it will be the fastest charging EV in Australia. In Thailand, we can see some of the details. There is an all-wheel drive performance model, which we don't have in Australia. So that all-wheel drive performance model could be coming to other markets, could be coming to Malaysia, to Europe, I believe, as well. Yeah, New Zealand, potentially, maybe, Australia. Pricing. Pricing is 64000 for the base model, right? But the previous model was quite a bit more expensive in Thailand than Australia. So I'm going to guess the price of the new version will be about the same as the price of the existing version when it eventually does come to Australia, which probably happened by the end of this year. The performance model, though, it costs an additional $7,000. So all-wheel drive, adding an extra motor in the front, and of course, it's much, much faster as a result, costs an additional $7,000 Australian dollars, or around $4,000 US dollars. Anyhow, what else do we know? Well, like I said before, that new charging speed enables it to charge from 10 to 80% in 12 minutes. So yeah, it's um, it will even beat the Zika 7X that I've just ordered. It will beat it in terms of being the fastest charging EV in Australia. I mean, they're both awesome, but yeah. The long range version has an 80.8 .8 kilowatt hour battery. So it's about six kilowatt hours smaller. It's actually nearly 10% smaller than the previous version, but it's a lithium ion phosphate battery. The battery chemistry has changed. So the all-wheel drive and the long range, they both get the same 81 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery, which as I said earlier, enables that super fast charging. In addition, there's improvements to the suspension, the chassis, comfort levels have been improved apparently because of upgraded double wishbone suspension with hydraulic damping. So reports are saying uh, that it's improved. Now, Riz from The Driven says that on the self-driving tech of the new G6, the car now has an eight megapixel front and rear camera and two NVIDIA or in intelligent driving chips, helping the car achieve high levels of LiDAR-free self-driving in China. So it sounds like in Thailand, it's gotten these new or in intelligent driving chips. That's big news. That's, um, that's a pretty big upgrade. There's some other visual changes you can see on the outside. The front light bar stretches all the way across the car. It's um, no longer two sections. So, I mean, I don't think that means much. There is a rear spoiler at the back of the car now as well, which makes the car five millimeters longer. Uh, there's also new wheels, different ambient lighting. The interior looks a little, little bit different, little, probably a little bit nicer. The center screen is slightly bigger, about half an inch bigger, not much difference. I don't think you'd be able to notice. Other than that, the, well, those are the actual main changes. So yeah, those are the main things. The price should be pretty similar, but the range will be shorter. That's the one downside. Lots of positives, I think, but there is one downside, which is the smaller battery. And of course, because it's lithium ion phosphate, the energy density will be a little lower as well. But I mean, you know, a lot of people love lithium ion phosphate batteries. I used to believe that they were a huge advantage over NMC and that... They might have been, but I don't think they are anymore, though. I think that um, now NMC batteries are very, very safe, and you can supercharge them up to 
And I wouldn't do it all the time, but you certainly can do it whenever you need to. Anyway, what about the other stuff, right? The other stuff is there's been some big changes. I just got an email today from Xpeng saying there's a big over-the-air over the software update that's been made, and that includes... Now, guys, before I actually get to that, I'm going to be doing a China tour, and I've already got a few people that are listed as coming or certainly interested in coming. If you'd like to come on the China tour, we're going to tour a, an EV show and actually see some of the, the some of the amazing cars in China, then send me an email, register your interest, and I can get back to you with some details. I'm putting that out there. I'm only going to take 20 people. So we've already, 25% is already accounted for. So if you're interested, contact at theelectricviking.com. Now, the big news here, Tesla superchargers, they all work now, or all the ones that Tesla has unlocked anyway, with Xpeng's chargers. We already, you probably already knew that, but anyway, that's news that is now official, that all Tesla's chargers that have been unlocked for other EVs will work with an Xpeng vehicle now. That might be the case for Zika as well. I'm not too sure on that one yet though. So the latest XOS, so operating system 5.8 update, brings uh, faster response times to your actual infotainment system, smoother animations, new in cabin intelligence designed to elevate your drive. To be honest, that stuff for me, for me is neither here nor there. I don't think it's gonna make any difference, but one big difference is this. Human machine co-pilot now standard. Navigate highways and city traffic with more confidence, lane centering control, LCC stays engaged even when you steer, creating smoother support on mergers and exits. Adaptive cruise control is enhanced for better cornering and more comfortable braking, perfect for winding Aussie roads. That's been one criticism of the um, software. In fact, it's a criticism of the software in every Chinese EV I've ever driven, and if not just Chinese EVs, every EV I've ever driven, except for Teslas, is when you're going on windy roads, often they'll kind of over, they'll kind of go too slow, yeah? And the other things, sometimes you might need to steer. Anyway, basically they're saying, human, if you interact with a car, it won't turn off the system, it won't try and fight you, and it will actually work with you. So this is a huge change. I think Xpeng made a really good decision in doing this based on user feedback. Here's what they said. It eliminates the intrusive feel of traditional LCC, um, no more fighting the wheel during system intervention and reduces delayed response in emergency avoidance scenarios. So I'll personally test this out and I'll get back to you and let you know how good this is. When I do my video update, I'm going to do an update on the channel. I've done 10,000 kilometers in my own EV. I've done about 13,000 in total in an Xpeng G6. I'll do a video on my experience very, very soon. It also has an update to pet mode. Keep your pet safe while you step away briefly. Windows close. Climate control stays on. You get real-time alerts via the Xpeng app. So I think it's the Xpeng app integration. There's also colder climate settings. You can now put your climate control down to 16 and a dash cam expansion. Now there is emergency recording giving you extra peace of mind on every trip. I'm not exactly sure on the details on that yet. One other feature is microphone-free karaoke. So you can play karaoke in the G6 without a microphone now, apparently, if that's your thing. Um, yeah, more of a Chinese thing really, isn't it? But anyway, uh, also another feature, X Combo Enhanced. So X Combo is a thing where you can basically on the app, you can put in there different settings that you want, your own personalized settings for the car to enable you to do certain things, which are quite complicated, pretty amazing that you can do this stuff on the app. It supports 21 languages, including English, and has a localized and personalized cockpit experience where you can adjust your car using this X, X Combo stuff. It's actually quite amazing what you can do with the Xpeng app. There is one tap scenarios, switch between modes, safety, comfort, and entertainment, and energy saving at any time. I'm not sure what that means, but that's part of the email. So we'll find out very, very soon on these updates. My car is actually just doing these updates right now using Wi-Fi. In addition to that, Xpeng have a new showroom in Crown, Sydney. So if you wanna do some gambling, go down to Crown. No, I'm just joking, don't bother, don't waste your money on gambling. Crown Sydney, that's a new showroom and apparently it's going to be um, showing so the G6, the Xpeng P7 Plus and the X2 flying car will be on site. You can also, I think, do test drives at that location. That's in Sydney, uh, Barangaroo in Sydney. So guys, what are your thoughts on this? 
personally, I, I think kudos to Xpeng for doing all these over the air updates. They don't need to do that. This is free stuff that you get. Manuf other manufacturers like legacy automakers, they tell you our car is capable of over the air updates. And then they don't do any. They're like, well, marketing phrase, it's capable of them. And you get none. It's, and you kind of probably feel like, I don't know. I think I'd feel a bit disappointed if I bought an EV and the company said, hey, you can get, it's capable of over the air updates and then they don't do any. They might, maybe they'll do some where they just fix things that are broken. But other than that, you don't get any new features. So I think it's pretty cool that companies will actually give you free stuff. Thanks for watching. Thank you.